for the students that aren't here today. So today I do want to go over the bilingual authorization program, what that looks like at Fresno State, um, what that entails, and then we'll transition over on how to actually become a dual immersion teacher and what that pathway looks like, the timeline. Um, we'll go into the credential program a little bit and some opportunities to work in a dual immersion classroom under the bilingual authorization program residencies. And um, we will be um, looking into what a preliminary credential is, what a clear credential is, if you haven't um, heard of that before. And then we'll save our raffle and Q&A to the very end. So if you have any questions at all throughout this presentation, do please feel free to add them to the chat. Um, you can unmute if you like, or if you prefer to say them to the very end, we will have time for questions then as well. So our bilingual authorization program at Fresno State, we have two options, one in Spanish, which has three courses in total, and one in Hmong, which has five courses in total. For the Spanish one, there is two um, that we recommend students to take under during undergrad, which is CI-135 and LEE-137. And then we ask students to save that LEE-136 class um, for uh, the credential program. And then for the Hmong option, same thing. Um, there's uh, some flexibility down here where you can pick and choose from a certain amount of classes. Um, and then these top three classes here, we recommend that students take them into uh, before the credential program and then saving that Lee 135 class for when they're actually in the credential program that's where you actually um, start learning how to teach content in either language and applying that during your student teaching. Um, so we will have Dr. Soltero here today um, uh, intro uh, introduce the BAP program and what that means and how to establish something here at Fresno State if you're interested in becoming um, a bilingual teacher. Um, so what is the program? Uh, what is the authorization? So it's something, it's an authorization that you get to teach in a specific language um, and a dual immersion program at an elementary school in a bilingual classroom. So here in California alone in public schools, we have over a million English learners. Um, so that student population is growing. And yes, do, we do need more teachers here in the Central Valley, but with dual immersion programs and classrooms growing, the need for dual immersion teachers is also growing too. Um, and we need teachers that can specifically address that population, the needs of those students linguistically and culturally. So again, um, here at Fresno State, we do offer this program in Spanish and Hmong. For the Spanish, it's three, those three additional classes. And for the Hmong option, it's those five additional classes. So we need more bilingual teachers. <laughs> Um, the benefits of the bilingual authorization, so not only do you meet California Department of Education requirements to work um, in these three different classroom settings, such as dual language, immersion programs, transitional development programs, or a structured English immersion program, you also become more marketable. You have more to offer to your students, not just understanding them and their language and their culture, but also more to offer in the classroom. Um, some districts do offer possible additional stipends. And again, you have those skills to support these students, this growing population linguistically and culturally. So how do you become a dual immersion teacher? So there is um, a few ways to get there, a couple of steps. So preferably you want to major and get a bachelor's degree in liberal studies, liberal arts, um, elementary teacher education, a similar field here at Fresno State, we offer a degree in liberal studies and that prepares you to be an elementary school teacher. Um, you want to also take the classes for the bilingual authorization, ideally during undergrad. There is a possibility to take them during the credential program. I'll go over that in a little bit but ideally you wanna get those out of the way, um, those main two classes, CI-135 and LEE 137 during, um, while you're completing your bachelor's. Then you also want to fulfill these two requirements before you apply to a teaching credential program, um, specifically the basic skills requirement, which you can still do through the CBES, but now you can also do through coursework. 
and the subject matter competency, which still can be done through the CSET, but can also be done through coursework. If you graduate from the liberal studies major here at Fresno State, that major is part of the state subject matter preparation program. So our students do get that, do fulfill that subject matter competency and they do not necessarily need to take the CSET because they've um, fulfilled it. Um, then you need to apply to a teaching credential program. So the bilingual authorization at Fresno State is directly applied to a multiple subject credential. So it's only for a multiple subject credential. Um, and we do have that credential here at Fresno State. And the multiple subject credential also is for students that want to be elementary school teachers. So you would have to apply to a teaching credential program. Um, complete your student teaching, complete the credential courses. There is an exam that elementary school teachers do have to take called the RECA exam, um, Reading Instruction Comprehension Assessment exam. And then you do have some assessments within the credential program that you also have to complete. Once you are done with the credential program and um, you're ready to get hired, go work at elementary school, have your own classroom, you still do have to apply for your preliminary credential. So you fulfilled all the requirements for your teaching credential, now you have to apply for it. Um, so that is the preliminary credential. Um, once you apply for that preliminary credential in that same paperwork is the uh, paperwork for the authorization. So once you have that, then that authorization will be granted to you and it's attached to your credential. Um, another thing to know is that you do have to participate in a teacher induction program, and that is usually offered through the school district that you are hired with. So some steps to get started um, with the bilingual authorization. If you're currently an undergraduate student, you wanna meet with your advisor, you want to strategize when you can take these courses. Um, if you're a junior or a senior, you want to try to take these before you get into the credential program, um, more specifically these top two. And then this one you can actually save for the credential program. So you just have to worry about these two classes. And then this one um, you would add in the credential program. If you apply to the credential program um, for the BAP, then these classes would be added onto your schedule. Um, for the Hmong pathway, again, you want to try to um, take these um, top three classes and any of these bottom classes during undergrad. And then the Lee 135 class you would actually um, save for the credential program. So meeting with your advisor to figure out when these classes are avail available typically and um, how to add them to your roadmap or your educational plan um, so that you can get them done before applying to the credential program. And then at this time, I will like to um, bring back our bilingual coordinator so she can tell you more about the BAP questionnaire that she currently has here for our program at Fresno State and how to establish yourself as a BAP student. Thank you, Maribel, and thank you for providing that um, pretty comprehensive overview on our program and pathway to attaining the bilingual authorization. Um, once again, thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Dr. Soltero Lopez and I am the Bilingual Authorization Program Coordinator. So um, uh, if um, Maribel or Gladys can uh, assist me in adding the link to our questionnaire in the chat. Um, many of you, I see a lot of, of our current BAP students um, in attendance today, which is wonderful. Thank you for being here. And you all likely have already filled out this questionnaire. But if any of you joining us today are interested um, and you're here because you wanted to learn more about the bilingual authorization and haven't yet filled out that questionnaire, please do so. Um, in lieu of a formal application process, this is the way that myself as a coordinator and folks like Maribel and other people that support the program keep track of student interest and keep track of current students in the program. So if you haven't yet had an opportunity or you click on that link and it doesn't look familiar, it doesn't hurt, go ahead and fill it out once again. Um, and that way, I, you know, I can make sure that I have your information on file. Um, so again, I want to thank Maribel for, for that um, really thorough introduction about the program and what it means to get the bilingual authorization. I guess I wanted to take this opportunity to, to um, um, 
elaborate and also maybe clarify some points. So um, when we're looking at the coursework, um, two things with the coursework. Some of you may be asking, why is the Spanish pathway three classes and why is the Hmong pathway five? We're working on it is a short answer. Um, this three course pathway that you're seeing here, actually um, just, uh, we just started implementing it this year. Um, so this is a new course pathway. Um, I also wanna clarify if any of you are current BAP students that had started the um, now phased out coursework, which was five courses, Spanish 119, Spanish 121A, Spanish 134, CLAS 120, and then the LEE 136 is the one that remained the same. I will still honor those. Um, the questionnaire is important for that because I do ask that question. You can also just email me and I'll go ahead and put my email in the chat so that I make sure that I connect with you and make record of that um, for those students that maybe have already taken uh, previous coursework. Um, the other thing I wanted to address in terms of the Hmong BAP is that I'm presently working um, with colleagues to minimize the coursework for that pathway as well, right? So having it mirror the Spanish one and having it be three courses. I'm actually also chairing a search right now. We're hoping to bring a new tenure track faculty specifically to teach the Hmong classes. And so my vision is that that person that we onboard ideally in fall 2022 will um, spearhead and the redesign so that the courses for the Hmong pathway will also be three. But as it stands right now, unfortunately, um, it is five classes. Um, I can reiterate enough the point Maribel brought up a few times. If you're interested, um, you, you, know, you, you are bilingual, you're a native speaker, or even if you took the language courses and you wanna become a teacher, take the classes you know, if your schedule permits as an undergrad. Um, as Maribel said, we'll talk a little bit more and provide you some perspective on the credential, but it's gonna be a lot easier to um, complete both the credential and the bilingual authorization if you started the bilingual authorization as an undergrad. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, and I'm forgetting at the moment. Oh, the, the, the two courses for the Spanish, the Lee 136, and for the Hmong pathway, the Lee 135, Maribel mentioned this, those courses are reserved for the credential and I wanted to elaborate on that. Those courses, um, uh, actually I, I, so I submitted um, curricular revisions will become um, only available to credential students. In the past, we've had undergrads take it and it's not a big deal, but um, we are an accredited program through the California Teaching Commission. And that those two classes are reserved for your clinical experience, your clinical placement as credential students. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the coming slides. But that's the reason why of, you know, the, for both pathways, you have one class that's reserved for you to take as a credential student. Relating to that point of clar clarification, oftentimes and likely as students in, um, in our undergraduate programs, you may hear about, um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the name. Um, uh, teach California Teach. Oh my gosh, Maribel or Gladys, what's the other credential program? Cal State. Cal State Teach. I know I was forgetting a word in there. Cal State Teach. So a lot of our undergraduates, you know, finish up our liberal studies, and Cal State Teach becomes more appealing than our credential program. I do want to um, clarify that. Um, right now, Cal State Teach does not have an authorized um, bilingual authorization. Um, and so in that scenario, um, likely you would have to pursue the CSET. Now that's why we emphasize that this program, the bilingual authorization is linked to the multiple subject program here at Fresno State, meaning that ideally our students go through liberal studies or another you know, undergraduate degree um, and then start our credential program here. Um, and that way you get credit, right? If you took, for example, the LEE 137 and CNI course as undergrads. So I wanna make sure that that's clear because I have gotten some inquiries of students that did liberal studies and then did Cal State teach and then say, I wanna do the BAP. And you, right, because of that disconnect of the credential was not granted through Fresno State multiple subject, um, in essence, sort of any coursework that was done for the BAP sort of becomes void. We checked in with CTC. So I wanna make sure that that's 
um, something you're informed on, right? I'm not saying don't pursue Cal State Teach. I will let you know, I've been working with their colleagues who are starting the process of getting um, accredited for that program, but it just hasn't yet launched. So um, please keep that in mind as you, you plan accordingly, right, with your educational studies. I'll leave it at that, Maribel, and, and we can definitely talk more maybe when we get into discussing the credential itself. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Soltero. Okay, so I'm going to jump ahead to the next step. So after you, if you uh, um, ideally take the classes during undergrad or you finish your undergrad and you're ready to apply to the credential program, um, how Dr. Soltero Lopez said, our BAP is applied to the multiple subject teaching credential and it's linked to the one here at Fresno State. So you will want to apply to that program, um, usually for the application period for summer or fall it will open um, at the end of January. So for next fall 2022, it'll open on January 31st and it'll close on March 31st. But you want to um, start gathering and applying for the program even before that, um, just because some of the items that um, you need to apply can take longer to gather and um, so start collecting, you know, all the documents that you need, create a folder on your computer and your Google Drive to start um, gathering the documents that you need to apply for the credential program. And then if you want to apply for the spring, that application usually opens around October and it'll close around November. So knowing the timelines, meeting with your advisors to plan out um, when to apply to the credential program, what are the requirements so that you can apply and um, get into it because you do need to um, apply to a credential program and get that preliminary credential to officially get your bilingual authorization. So once you are in the credential program, so here are the prerequisites needed to apply. And then again, those requirements that um, CBEST or basic skills requirement and the CSETs or um, that subject matter competency requirement do need to be fulfilled before applying to the credential program. And every phase is considered a semester. So that first phase you're taking 15 units. So you see on here, um, which is why we recommend why to take those classes during undergrad, um, because otherwise you would be adding those additional courses on top of those 15 units. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like for every semester. This is more specifically for the multiple subject. So again, we do have that education specialist credential as well. Um, or the dual credential, but this one um, is an example for the multiple subject. Um, that first semester, you're mostly focusing on courses um, and on fulfilling that Lee 158 class so that you can be ready to take that RECA exam that we mentioned. That second phase, um, you then become internship eligible. You can start doing your initial student teaching. And then the last phase, you're mostly focusing on that field study, completing your student teaching, and just a few classes that you have to finish up. This is some information on the RECA exam, and we'll put the link in the chat if you want to um, look into it. Um, but this is something that you will be supported with in the credential program, but it is a, a and the exam that elementary school teachers do still have to take, it's a reading instru instruction competence assessment. Um, so this is something that you also have to complete before you apply for that preliminary credential. And on this was directly taken um, from their website. So they do have some practice um, uh, resources on there and they tell you specifically what um, they're testing you on, um, like what type of testing. So they have multiple choice, educational problems, nutritional tasks, a case study, um, and then all the information on how to apply and everything is on their website. Um, you also do have to complete um, your initial student teaching and fieldwork courses. This can be done through the different pathways that the Fresno State Credential Program offers, either through the cohort placement, so doing the cohort evening, evening cohort pathway, if you want to do the internship um, path, the teacher internship program, or through the residencies available at each of um, the partnerships that we have with 
the local school, school districts. So we have some with Clovis Unified, Fresno, Madeira, and our rural program, which I believe lets you do some um, residencies in Kerman, um, Firebellas Deltas, and Mendota Unified. Um, so what, which option you wanna do is up to you. Um, I'm not gonna go through each um, of them, but I do want to bring a little atten more attention to the bilingual authorization residencies, which do give you um, the opportunity to do your student teaching um, and a field work placement specialized, specializing in a dual immersion classroom. So we have that opportunity with Fresno Unified, um, with Madera Unified and the Rural Residency. Each of them offer different um, incentives for their candidates. So Fresno Unified does have a financial incentive of $13,000. However, they do expect you to commit to their district for three years after you're done with their teaching with your teaching credential. Same thing with Madera, um, there's is a $12,000 incentive, um, but they also expect you to commit for three years. So th these are really good if you really wanna get your foot in the door in these particular districts and also um, get more hands-on and intensive practice in your student teaching in a dual immersion classroom. And then the rural residency also has the opportunity for BAP Spanish. I believe they have um, smaller cohort sizes, uh, opportunity for optional employment with teaching fellows. They have um, a financial incentive where they give you technology. So probably like a laptop, tablet, computer, um, and then there's additional opportunities for more professional development and um, coaching. And I did have that QR code on there if you want to look more into those details of um, our bilingual authorization residencies. When it's time to apply for your preliminary credential, you do have to have all these items complete your uh, prerequisite classes, your credential courses, um, the RECA exam, your clinical hours and the field placements, um, Cal TPA assessments, CPR training. Um, if you do the BAP classes um, through Fresno State, you do submit all your paperwork and fees to us at Ed 100 and we um, submit on your behalf. And then um, once you um, fill out that paperwork, the bilingual authorization will be issued to you with your preliminary credential. And that does stay with you um, even after you renew. So the preliminary credential will last five years. Um, you do also have to go through a first year teacher induction program. Um, it's a program that supports new teachers with the tools and support to meet um, teacher performance standards. It's usually offered and sponsored by the district that hires you. And then after those five years, then you can upgrade um, or clear your credential. So then you um, have that clear credential. And again, the bilingual authorization will stay with you every time you renew. Another um, option that I, uh, we have is um, to do how Do uh, Dr. Sotero Lopez mentioned, which I'll have her um, go over this slide in a bit, is through the CSET world language, um, specifically with Spanish. Um, and we also will clarify what it means to, um, what that means. So I'll, I'll share this slide with you, Dr. Sotero. Okay, thank you, Maribel. So um, another thing that I, I want for all um, interested BAP candidates or current BAP candidates to know is that there are three approved, right, um, through our CTC, through our accrediting body, um, ways to accomplish, to attain the bilingual authorization. We've talked and um, I would encourage you to, to, to um, entertain doing it through the coursework that we have here at Fresno State. So one way would be exclusively through coursework, the other way, and this is what um, the image down here depicts, is doing the CSET. And um, the, the CSET subtests are subtests three, four, and five. And I'll, I'll put a link in the chat so that you can get more information. And the other thing to note, right, with the coursework and the CSET is that our coursework is equivalent to a subtest of the CSET, right, if that makes sense. So um, as an example, subtest three of the CSET is equivalent 
to our Lee 137 course. So again, using the Spanish one, because that's three classes and three subtests, each course has an equivalent. A big question that I often get is um, the assumption that you take the class and then you take the CSET. You do not have to take the CSET if you take the classes, right? So using again, our, our Spanish pathway, if you took all three classes, you are not expected, it is not necessary for you to then take these three subtests of the CSET. It's either or, or I shouldn't say either or, because um, the last option is that you can do a combination, right? You can do a combination of maybe you take one class with us and you decide to do the two other you know, subtests that you're, that you're missing or vice versa, right? Maybe you took two classes, but then you weren't able to take the last one before you graduated. So you decide to do the CSET. Um, and of course, you know, I'll go ahead and put my email in the chat again. Um, I can have one, you know, set up one-on-one -on -one conversations with you to talk about this option. Um, and to share, most of our students, um, I've been coordinator for a year, um, typically are very successful in just taking all our courses. But um, going back to our, our um, encouragement of starting the BAP courses as undergrads, as you saw, right, the first two phases of the credential program are pretty intense with five classes each semester, right? And those are just for the credential. If you're mapping on the BAP courses, that's in addition, right? So potentially six classes each uh, or for the first two semesters to get the credential and the bilingual authorization. Um, that's a lot, to be very frank. I'm faculty in the program, it's a lot. So this combination option, I actually have worked with a few credential students um, so that they can get the bilingual authorization completed um, while, you know, at the same time that they're completing the credential. Um, so again, just to recap, the bilingual authorization can be obtained exclusively through coursework, exclusively through CSET or a combination of CSET and coursework. Um, another really important point that I wanna share with everyone here is that um, a lot of times our students, because as I mentioned, our credential can be overwhelming, likely maybe our undergraduate studies for some of you may be a lot to then map additional courses. Um, please know that if you happen to graduate with our, you know, from our credential program without the bilingual authorization, it is not a missed opportunity. In other words, it doesn't mean that because you have a credential, you will never be able to get the bilingual authorization. Um, you can always pursue the bilingual authorization. In that scenario, if you're one year removed, let's say from our credential program, and you're like, I really want to teach in a dual immersion, on your own, you can take the CSETs. And at that point, because you're no longer matriculated with us, you're responsible to re you know, reporting your scores directly to our um, California Teaching Commission, our CTC. Um, but please know that regardless of where you are in your studies, as a coordinator, I'm here to guide you and support you in making sure that all of these, you know, things that we're talking about here are clear for you, um, for your particular circumstance, your own pathway. Please don't hesitate to reach out um, and we can always set up a, an appointment to speak about your, your unique situation. Thank you, Dr. Sotero. All right, so we have made it to the end of our presentation. At this time, I'd like to open it up for questions. Um, again, please feel free to add them to the chat or if you want to unmute, you're also welcome to do that as well. So yeah, what questions do you guys have? Let's check. So any news on financial aid or assistance? So I think for if you're referring to the credential program, um, I would still recommend to apply to financial aid um, once you graduate and you apply to a credential program because you still may receive something from the university or scholarships. If you get any scholarships, there are scholarships out there for credential students or students that are um, majoring or doing teaching credentials with the Kremlin School of Education. They do want a financial aid application on file. So I would still do that. I believe there's also a TEACH grant that um, is out there that you can apply to as well. 
And yes, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna ask very quickly, uh, Maribel, uh, just to add, um, likely again, your your the inquiry is um, on financial support is um, you've been recently admitted into our, our program. Congratulations! Um, I would encourage you to reach out to the financial aid office directly. Um, obviously, we're, we we don't do none of that financial. Um, you know, allocation of funds through our program, it all gets um, done through financial aid. So any questions, I know oftentimes there's like issues with um, holds for fees or things like that. Please, please advocate for yourself and reach out to the um, financial aid office directly. They, they're the best people, I guess is what I'm trying to say to answer direct questions in terms of when can you hear about how much, you know, you're going to get um, anything like that, like dues, if you do have to pay out of pocket, for example, when is the deadline, they're the most appropriate body that can answer those type of questions. Sorry, Maribel. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Um, I believe Erica has her hand raised. Would you like to unmute and ask a question, Erica? Yeah, I have a question. So I um, am no longer an undergrad. I'm enrolled into the multiple subject program and I wasn't able to take the um, two classes that I believe you guys recommended that I'm supposed to take before LEAD 136. Would it still be recommended that I do LEAD 136 first or should I wait that for that until like the end? Does that make sense? And did I catch that correctly, Erika? You're in our credential program? Yeah, I'm starting in January. So I'm- Okay, I'm so you, excellent. Okay, that's a great question. So um, yes, you can still um, take all three classes um, and ideally right in your situation. Are you in our evening cohort or are you in a residency? Evening cohort? Okay, so that, that I asked because um, our like, um, our Sanger residency, that's a that's a one year, so it's just two semesters. So for you, Erika, since you're gonna be in the program three semesters, you can take one of the BAP classes each semester. Um, great question, I'm glad you asked about the LEE 136. That um, course, Erika, I think um, taking it either in the second semester, second phase, or final phase is ideal. The reason, and Maribel addressed this, um, we have an awesome office of clinical practice who assists and supports you with placing you into a student teaching position, right? They they, inc they inquire about like your first, um, your first and second and third choices with district, grade level, all kind of stuff. And as best as they can, they try to place you in that type of setting. So they come into play in the second and final phase. So for you, Erika, it'd be perfect if that LEAD 136 was taken again, either of those semesters, because it'll pair very nicely with your student teaching. That's a great, great question. Thank you. Alondra, I see you have your hand raised as well. Would you like to unmute and ask a question? Yes, hello. Um, uh, first question I have is, I joined this meeting a little late. So where can I find this recording? Uh, so we are recording the session. And then once I have the video, we will upload it to our Enseñamos YouTube but I will be sending it to everyone that um, participated today or RSVP for today. Okay, and my second question is, um, I received the class number through an email to join Lee 136. And for some reason, it's telling me that the course is not available. Um, I'm just a little confused about that. Yes, Alondra, I, I got your email. So I'm working on that. I'm not sure what's happening with the scheduling and why it's not popping up, but I'm working on that. And I'll, um, I'll provide clear instructions once I get um, information from the scheduling folks. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Um, let's see. A question, Dr. Soltero, does the program allow transfer units from other universities or programs? So if, if students um, wanted to substitute some of the BAP courses, is that a possibility? You know, this is the first, that's a great question. This is the first time that question has been brought up. I honestly do not know. What I can do is I can check with um, the CTC to see if that's permissible. Um, and, 
May, I see, I see that you asked that question. I know you are joining us um, next semester from and have right substantial units from another university. I'll make sure to follow up, but maybe send me a, a email at the beginning of next semester um, just to follow up. It does take the CTC um, quite a bit of time. Sometimes I send them emails and it takes them a minute. So it's not on my end, um, but I'll definitely send that email out May and hopefully we can get a, a answer to that sooner rather than later. Thank you. How many courses is needed to complete the BAP? So for the Spanish pathway, it's three courses. And for the Hmong pathway, it is five courses. Um, residency. So the residency program, so I will go back to that slide. So the residency program is something that you can apply to um, in addition to the credential program to get additional hands-on, more intense experience. Um, and it's a way to fulfill that um, field, those field work courses, that part where you have to do your student teaching. So it's an option to do it through there and you actually um, go to those school districts, um, you do your student teaching observation in those school districts, and then you actually stay at the school district, either in the school or a different location in that area um, to do your credential classes. So that's something I did not mention is with residencies, you are very immersed in those school districts. And to uh, further elaborate, so um, as Maribel mentioned, we do have several um, residency programs and models. Um, again, the residency um, occurs, you're considered a resident of that district while you're doing the credential coursework, right? So it's not that you do the coursework and then the residency starts. If, if that's, um, I think, how I was understanding that question. The other thing to note, because I brought up Sanger as an example, um, Fresno Unified as an, another example, starts the residency in the summers, every summer. They are the exception. They start the residency in summer. For example, we have our cohort of Fresno um, residents right now finishing up the program this spring, right? But they did three phases, but they start phase one in the summer. Um, the rural and Sanger residency that I mentioned, um, those are one-year programs, so two phases. They start in the fall and spring semester, and they're out. Um, considering, right, the... Um, advising sheet that Maribel um, showed you, those are pretty intense because they're, they're squishing in all those classes into two semesters as opposed to three. So something to think about. Um, please email me. I can also, um, another thing to note about the residencies is that um, we do have what we call professors in residence. And that is like someone like me who is a faculty in the program or affiliated with um, the program in some capacity. We serve as liaisons between the district and Fresno State, the credential program. Um, please email me. I'm gonna actually try to see if I can get that information very quickly so I can put it in the chat. But if you have specific questions, Maribel brought up like the stipends associated with some of these residencies, you wanna get a sense of you know, uh, more detailed information, I can give you the uh, professor in residence email so you can have um, you know, a meeting with them and they can provide much more detailed information on that program. But um, great question about the residencies. Again, there are some nuances and some differences across these residency models. Yes. Yeah, so, yes, go for it. Uh, so for the Fresno residency, if it starts in the summer, um, should we start the, our credential program? Like, should we start it in the summer too, or should we start it? Because like, I'd be graduating like one semester early. So like after when, um, after fall semester, I'm done. So I was thinking if I should take like spring off and then come back during summer and do my credentials and my residency together, or should I like start my credentials during the spring semester? So if you apply to the Fresno Unified one, so um, that's something that I was gonna mention right now, in fact. Um, you want to look into each residency, contact either the coordinator or the professor in residence for more information as to that residency. Because for example, Fresno Unified actually start, has their own application in addition to the teaching credential and the CSU apply application that they have. And they actually um, are doing that right now, I believe. Um, 
So they, they have their own deadline for that application. And if you get in, then you're expected to start your credential program and the residency in the summer. And then you're done in the spring. And to the, the, the question, the part of your question, Amanda, um, if you are really like Fresno Unified is like your number one, you really want to do that residency. And for example, you've already been offered admission into our, our um, like evening cohort for next semester. Um, I would caution you against starting our credential next semester and then trying to do the residency in the, um, in the summer. Um, I don't want to like uh, uh, firmly say that that's not allowed. That would be a perfect question for our multiple subject coordinator who is Dr. Heather Horsley. Um, I, in, in my experience in teaching in the Fresno Unified program, I don't know that anyone's been allowed, for example, to skip the summer because they already took the courses in the first phase in the spring prior, right, if that makes sense. So please reach out to Dr. Horsey. I'll put her email in the chat. Um, and again, as Maribel said, Fresno Unified does have their own rigorous um, um, application and interview process that um, it starts pretty early. So um, I can also put the, the email and name of the Fresno Unified um, coordinator of the residency in the chat. So you can ask her directly, right? Expectations and timeline for that residency. These are really good questions. Thank you. Yes, thank you very that, much. That QR code will also take you to the website where um, you can also find all those emails um, for the different uh, residencies. Does this program guarantee you a placement at a DLI school after finishing? Um, so the, the Fresno and the Madera one do have that district commitment where you do um, work at that school district after you're done with your teaching credential. Um, the rural residency and I believe the Sanger residency, I think the Sanger residency has preferential hiring after you're done with the teacher. Um, credential program, but they do not necessarily place you somewhere um, the same way that the Fresno Unified and Madera ones do. And if any of you are um, starting or, for example, currently in our evening cohort, um, at the moment, um, there is a, uh, uh, the state as a whole is challenged by not having enough mentor teachers or districts that have DI programs um, willing to host, right, or again, just the capacity issue. So for folks typically in our evening cohort, um, you still, you know, will get through and get the bilingual authorization. What our, um, I mentioned our Office of Clinical Practice earlier, what we strive to do is that at least one semester in your evening cohort, we try to place you in a bilingual dual immersion setting. If that doesn't happen, please do not get alarmed. It doesn't mean that your, you know, your um, completion of the BAP coursework becomes invalidated. This is just a national, um, national, not national, a state challenge that um, our CTC is very well aware of. And so they are being very flexible, right? To allow our candidates to still gain, um, right? Clinical practice hours, even if they might not be in a bilingual dual immersion classroom. Alondra, did you have another question? Yes. So I am interested in the Madeira um, BAP. Do they have their own application too, as far as Unified? Yes. Um, there is a new coordinator um, that started this year, and I'll put her email in the chat. But I do believe they also, like Fresno, have their own process of interviewing and selecting. Um, the students that they would like to be in their districts for the residency. Okay, um, can you add that email to the chat so I can send, send her a quick email? Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Do we have any other questions? These are all very awesome questions.
No, no other questions. Okay, well, if anything does come up, um, I will include our, um, I'll put my email in the chat as well. Um, and I'll have our enseñamos email um, at the end with along with our social media. If you want to um, follow us and keep up with any of our events, if you want to reach out to me or Dr. Soltero Lopez with any questions that may come up later. Um, at this time, I would like to um, transition us over to our survey. Um, please feel free to leave us any questions, comments, or any feedback, um, or maybe other platicas or other things that you all want to learn about or would like presentations on um, as you make your way through this academic journey. Um, yeah, let us know what, what you want to see and what you want to hear. So before I set up our raffle, please um, use the QR code um, or I'll put the, or the link is in the chat as well if you want to open that up really quickly for us and just fill it out while I set up our raffle. Um, thank you all for being here today. We really appreciate, you know, taking the time to come um, learn about the bilingual authorization. Um, really great questions. We love to see students advocating for their, themselves and we are here to support you all in any way that we can. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now.